Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited today to show off this Kirby set for you. This is a 3D Kirby in Dreamland inspired set. When I was young, in my teens, I got the 3DS and I played Kirby in Dreamland probably a hundred times. So I recently received these tiny polishes. I showed them off in a Zillaboo haul on my last video if you haven't checked that out. And I thought they were perfect for the look that I was going for. I also got some new stands. So as you can see here, these are a really nice thick acrylic. The bottom is not hollow, so it stays in place really well. I was finding that I was knocking over my other stands and the magnet wasn't quite as strong as I wanted. So yeah, I will link those down below if you're looking for some new nail stands. But first, I have already gone in, I base coated all the nails. I've added two coats of this tiny color here. This is the pink from the Sunset Collection that I showed off in my Zillaboo haul. Everything will be linked in the description so you can pick it up if you like these colors. But now I'm just going in and I'm removing that tacky layer because I am planning on doing some 3D art on top of this and I don't want any of that sticky layer. But first, I am going to do the rainbow ombre that was really the inspiration behind this set. So I pull out a couple more of those colors from that tiny collection along with the Jinbi purple from the Sweet Tea collection. I just felt that the tone of the purple fit a little bit better with the other three colors that I was using. All of these are syrup gels, which means they are semi-transparent. I thought that meant that they would blend together really nicely, and I wasn't wrong. I did, however, go in and decide to do a wet blend. What I mean by that is I laid down all the colors in the places that I want them to be, and then I tried to blend them together with like an ombre brush while they were still wet. I think this worked okay, but for future sets, I do think I will do more of a dry blend, meaning I will lay down one color, blend out the edges of that, cure it, and then go in with the other color on top of it. I think it'll just be easier for me to get a more opaque color payout doing it that way, because as you'll see here, doing this method, it did take quite a few tries. I had to go in and use like an ombre brush here, this was the Enel Couture ombre brush, and I had to do a couple coats because it was that syrup consistency. It was semi-transparent, so I did have to do a couple coats to get the color payoff that I wanted. So I think in the future I will try a dry blend, like I said. The syrup gels are really good at self-leveling, but that also meant that they were kind of pulling away from the center and the color in the middle where I was trying to blend it together was becoming a little bit too transparent for my liking, so I had to go back in, add more polish, blend it together again before I really got a good base down. So yeah, I think next time I will try just putting one color down, blending it out, adding the next color, blending it out, and so on. But one thing I did find was actually using the brush that these colors came with instead of just an ombre brush led to a better blend as well. I don't do it for this first nail, I stick with the ombre brush but I do try it for the next nail. So as you'll see, that method worked just a little bit better, but if you all have any tips for what you do for good blends, for good ombres, I'd love to hear. I am just a self-taught nail enthusiast, so I am still kind of figuring out my favorite methods for things. I do have an airbrush. I used it once, and then I found out that it's actually not very healthy to aerosolize nail polish. Supposedly, it makes the particles small enough for you to breathe in, and it can be really bad for that to get into your lungs, which, you know, in hindsight, that makes a lot of sense. So I have an airbrush. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. I, I did get some acrylic paints because I've heard that that's fine to aerosolize. You should probably still wear a mask when you do it, but otherwise those particles are okay. Probably not the healthiest, but definitely better than aerosolizing like a gel polish. So maybe I will try that. I just... I love the look of airbrushing, it gives the most flawless finish, the most perfect blend, but it is kind of a pain to set up because you have to mix the paints and you have to pull out the airbrush itself and then clean it afterwards. So if you have any tips on how you get the best blends, the best ombres, let me know. I have tried the sponge method, so using like a makeup sponge to blend together colors. 
I find it's okay. I don't love the texture that it leaves behind. I'd rather have a more smooth finish. So brushes have been my way of doing it for a while now. As you can see here, I'm using the actual brush that comes with the gel. And that seems to be working a little bit better even than going in with like the ombre brush and trying to blend together the colors. It's just about layering the colors and making sure that you are not over blending them together so that they become muddy. Here I am just adding more layers of the color so that I get the right payoff, the right opacity that I wanted. I do like working with these gels because they are the same syrup consistency. They did blend together a lot better than say like a fully opaque gel might. With that, I have a feeling that you would get a lot of streaks trying to blend these together. But these were nice to work with. Here I am finally trying a dry blending technique. So I cured the rest of the nail and now I'm going in with that purple color. That's the only color that's wet. And I found that it was just blending together a little bit easier. I was getting a more even gradient as I feathered it out towards the edges. So in the future, I will try that dry blending technique over the whole nail. So as I said, this set was inspired by the game Kirby in Dreamland. If you all ever played it, um, let me know. It was one of my favorites as a kid, as a teenager. I had a 3DS and I didn't have a ton of games, but I had that one and Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, of course. I also had Harvest Moon, which was one of my favorite kind of like life simulator games. I was always trying to date the mermaid. If you played, you definitely know what that means. Here is a little Kirby that I had actually purchased at Disney World. They have a little Japan area in Epcot and I picked up that little Kirby figurine and he was kind of the inspiration behind the color palette for the set. Now I'm going in to do the 3D elements with the McCart nonstick 4-in-1 nail glue. This stuff is really great for sculpting because it has such a stiff consistency. You can really mold it to whatever shape you want and it's going to stay in that shape. You can move it around before curing it. It's really just like clay. So I'm going in here and creating the moon. The reason I wiped off the tacky layer of the nail polish after curing it was because if you keep that tacky layer on there, any non-stick gel that you put on top is going to, well, stick. It's going to adhere to that tacky layer, but without it, you can just pull off any mistakes you make and start over. McCart has a bunch of different shades of this non-stick glue, a ton of different tones of pink, some sparkly non-stick glue. It's just really versatile. You can use it almost like a poly gel to do nail extensions. You can use it to adhere your nail tips if you're doing full cover. You can also use it like I do here for 3D nail art. Now it does have a slight tacky layer, so it is something that I would recommend you top coat over. But otherwise, I think it's just so great very versatile and I mainly use it to sculpt with. I think it'd be perfect for like that 3D flower trend that's going around right now. This is the light pink color and it was the perfect Kirby shade. I'm just going in here and making his little body. If you look up Kirby in Dreamland, one of the main images is a little picture of him like sleeping on the moon. I will try to insert that picture here so you can see the inspiration. So I was attempting to recreate him sleeping, but without the hat, I felt the hat might be a little too complex. I was really trying to go for something that had pretty basic shapes so that I could make sure that sculpting it would be easy enough for me. So now I'm going in and I am sculpting his little arms. You definitely want to wear gloves with any sort of gel. I've seen some brands saying like, oh, it's totally safe to use your hands. But from my understanding, anybody really can develop a gel allergy from some of the compounds in uncured gel. So I personally just wouldn't risk it. I've started wearing gloves whenever I'm working on nails, even when it's press ones here where it's like not on my nail and at risk of bleeding into the cuticle. 
anytime I'm working with gel and coming in direct contact with it, I do just try to wear gloves. If you are going to be working with any sort of 3D sculpting gel, any of these like non-stick glues, I would recommend making sure that you have nitrile gloves. At first, I was just using the cheap like latex-free gloves from Walmart or whatever drugstore I could pick some up from, but for some reason, I don't know if they have some sort of coating on the outside of the gloves, whenever I would use these non-stick gels, they would stick to the gloves. But I had seen other people doing all sorts of artwork with them and never having that problem. Then I realized it was because they were using nitrile. Nitrile gloves are also really important if you are working with gel because acetone will not bleed through them. They are much more resistant to chemicals than say your common latex gloves because I was again using those cheap ones from like Walmart and I was doing some airbrushing and I was noticing that like my hands were getting sticky and it was because the acetone and the polish mix that I put in my airbrush was getting on the gloves and then it was leaking through. So if you are a nail artist or somebody who wants to work with acetone, definitely make sure that you get some nitrile gloves. Also recommended if you want to get into 3D nails are these silicone tools. So these ones I actually got in a scoop from Enel Couture. I believe these scoops are going out of stock very soon and Max doesn't plan on bringing any of them back, but I think you can get the tool set on his website regardless. Either way, any sort of silicone tool set will do very well for you. These sorts of gels don't stick to silicone, neither will any of your polishes. If you ever get polished on something silicone and you want to get it off, just cure it and then it should peel right off. So the mat that I have underneath my workspace is also silicone. I have a set of silicone tools for molding. That's why like 3D nail art molds are all made of silicone because once you cure the gel, it shouldn't stick at all. It should leave it with a nice finish. So here is one of the only elements that I did not sculpt from hand. These are these cute little acrylic wings. I had purchased these, I think from Timu. I will try to find the link and make sure to include that below. The wings are basically the only 3D element that I did not sculpt by hand for this set. Now for the middle finger, I thought I wanted to do some sort of like magic wand. I thought it was fitting with the Kirby in Dreamland theme. So I do one here that's made out of a heart. I first go in with just a circular blob of that nonstick gel and I put a slit in the top and then kind of curve the edges in towards the center to make the initial heart shape. Now I'm going in with those silicone tools, just rounding out the top, making sure the shape is how I want it to be. Now I actually don't end up going with this design by the end. I thought I would show you how I made this wand, but the end product is actually one that I make off camera just because I sat with it for a day or two after finishing the set. I didn't love how it turned out, and so I did go ahead and redo it. But now I'm working on the ring finger. So I am using a picture of Strawberry Shortcake from the game as inspiration. If you played Kirby in Dreamland, you know that all of it starts off with somebody, I think it's Meta Knight, stealing his Strawberry Shortcake piece. So I wanted to make sure to include the iconic Strawberry Shortcake. I'm going in and I am molding out the basic shape on just a clear sticky note. This is something that gel doesn't stick to, so I can mold it there and then put it on the nail once I have the initial shape how I want it. The tool I'm using here is just the back end of like a poly gel brush, that metal spatula. And now I'm just making sure that that cake slice is where I want it on the nail going in and sharpening up those edges. I went with a profile view, side view of the cake so you could see the little layers and I plan on adding a little strawberry on the top and some whipped cream. I should have said this before, but the reason I'm doing all my sculpting in white is because I plan on painting over these. I actually want some of that white to peek through because if you paint over them with a jelly color, it'll give you a nice depth of color. 
you'll see a little bit of that white peeking through on the edges that are a bit more pronounced that way it kind of mirrors the nature of background colors that are that syrup consistency where they have that slight transparency to them I hope that makes sense, but basically I just wanted a white background so that I could use the same syrup colors to paint over it so it will still have that slight syrup consistency to it. You can actually mix in a little bit of your nail polish with the molding gels. So like these ones here, you could mix with any color you want to get a custom color of sculpting clay. It does make it slightly more sticky so it's not quite as non-stick once you start adding colors to it but it'll give you like a nice opaque color. However, I didn't want opacity. I actually wanted the transparency, which is why I chose to mold in white. Now I'm going in and I'm just making the little strawberry topper. I did this a couple times actually. It always ended up being too big. So I think I remade it about three different times, but here I'm just getting the general shape down molding on that plastic sticky note that way i can cure right on the sticky note and then peel off the strawberry then i'm going in with just a little orange wood stick and i thought i would add the texture of the strawberry with the little dimples where the seeds would go so i poke teeny tiny little holes in it before curing ultimately at the end i don't know that that was necessary you can't really see them in the finished product but Maybe there's a way I can find to make them a bit more pronounced moving forward. But for now, I am just moving on to that middle finger again, attaching those wing charms. I just use my trusty McCart rhinestone glue, add a little bit to the back and then flash cure it before giving it a full cure. Then I'm using that same non-stick gel and I am going to make the stem of the wand. I think the reason I end up not loving the end result of this is because it looks a little bit like a child's rattle, like a baby's rattle. I was going for more like magical girl, magic wand, but I think I made the stem a little bit too skinny and I added this little flower design at the bottom which turns into something else entirely by the end of the set and I just didn't love the way it looked. I think it's good for maybe another set but not this Kirby one. So I go ahead and take off the bottom and say you know what I will revisit that design at the end. Let me go on to do some painting. I'm laying down those same colors from earlier. The only one I'm adding that I didn't show is number 86 from Born Pretty. This is a really nice candy red color and I sheer it out just a little bit with some top coat. You'll see me add a dollop of that here just to make it that same syrupy consistency as all of the other colors. So I mix that together and it becomes this perfect sheer red for his little feet. Kirby's design is so simple, but so effective. Some of you know that I teach high school English, but I also am lucky enough that I get to teach a film class. It's a literature and film class where we look at movies kind of like you would at a book, any other sort of storytelling method. So one of the things that we talked about recently was character design. And a huge part of character design is having a really iconic silhouette. Silhouette meaning the overall shape of a character if you don't have any of the colors, any of the textures. And Kirby's silhouette is just so recognizable. He has that classic round shape. Everything about him is very rounded, which makes him very cutesy and innocent looking, which actually I think contrasts really well with kind of the idea that he is a menace that eats other things and absorbs their powers. So I love that about him. I think. Uh, he just has a great character design overall. Now I'm taking that same red and I am painting the strawberry. I gave it a really quick like 10 second cure and then I go in with that same orange wood stick and I try to press into those dimples that I made earlier so that I could retain some of that texture, some of that 3D shape. And I'm just going in and finishing his other little foot here. 
Now, I do think I made his hand slightly too big. If you look at the reference image, I think his hand could have been, or I guess his arm, it's his whole appendage, but I do think it could have been a little bit smaller, but for my first attempt at sculpting him, I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna go in here and paint the moon yellow. So now is where you can see what I mean. I painted these or I sculpted these in white so that when you added the paint on top of them, a little bit of that white color would show through so that you get that nice jelly effect. If I had done this in clear or if I had sculpted them in any other color, you would have been able to see the background color peeking through. So like if this moon was clear, the yellow would look really dull because it wouldn't have that nice bright pop of white in the background to make it a nice and vibrant color. So I'm just adding a second coat of that yellow just to get it a bit more bright, a little bit more even. And I added yellow to that wand as well. Now I'm mixing together the red and the yellow to get more of like a peachy color. This is for the cake slice. In hindsight, the color might be a little bit too flesh toned. It is very like skin color, but I think with the strawberry and with the frosting, it ends up looking okay. Um, it, it does just look slightly unnerving right now. And then I felt like the strawberry wasn't really giving off strawberry well enough, so I wanted to add the strawberry leaves at the top to make sure that it really read as a strawberry. So I go in with teeny tiny little bits of that 3D sculpting gel, and I sculpt a little leaf. I just do this on the spatula itself, and then I stuck the spatula into my nail lamp to cure it. Then I'm going in with this black paint and I'm giving Kirby his little face. I start with his mouth and then go in for his eyes. This is super blurry, sorry about that. This is probably my sixth attempt at getting the proportions right. Something was throwing me off and I think it's actually, I mentioned it earlier, I made his arm a little bit too big. So when I was trying to match his facial expression on his body to that on the picture, it just wasn't looking right. But that's okay, I think these still turn out cute. Now I'm taking a 3D embossing gel in white and I am using that for the frosting. This one is from Honey Girl and it's just a cheap one that I got off of Timu. It works well enough, it does get a little chunky. I think actually I would have preferred using the Madame Glam embossing gel that I just received recently. If you haven't seen that video, I will try to remember to add a link to it right up above at the top of the screen. I was reached out to from a PR representative through Madame Glam. They offered to send me some products and I had been eyeing their products for a long time, so I was really excited to try them. I got a couple embossing gels and some regular cream gel and a paint gel. So yeah, go check out that video if you wanna see me review some of their products. Now I'm just using a jelly green from Born Pretty. This is one of their summer collections to paint the little leaves. And I will add those into the whipped cream at the back of the strawberry to make it look more realistic, more like a real strawberry. But first, I add a little bit more of that embossing gel and I really try to work it to get some nice peaks so that it looks fluffy like whipped cream. This embossing gel I was noticing, it does self-level quite a bit, so you do end up losing a little bit of that texture, whereas the Madame Glam one, it is slightly stiffer. So like if I put peaks into it, if I put texture into it, it seems like it stays a little bit better. So. Had I had it when I made this set, I definitely would have preferred reaching for that one. It's also non-wipe, which is amazing, so you can put it on on top of a set and leave it, no need to top coat it or anything. But I think overall, for my purposes here, this one worked out fine. 
Now I'm just adding the frosting in the middle. So it looks like two layers of cake sandwiching a layer of frosting or whipped cream, I guess. Strawberry shortcake generally is whipped cream. I have such a big sweet tooth. I love cakes and cookies and all those sorts of things. So this little dessert set was right up my alley. Do you all have a favorite dessert or are you more of like a savory type person? Let me know down in the comments. Now I'm going in and just adding some Z's to show that Kirby is indeed sleeping. And because I had added quite a few coats of that colored polish to create this ombre, the surface of the nail was quite uneven. So I'm just taking my base coat here, adding quite a thick layer, treating it almost like a hard gel and doing an overlay to even out the surface for the designs that I'm going to be painting. So that's why I'm laying on extra product here, especially in the middle to try to make that nice apex. This also makes the press on nails super, super strong. So these will be up on my Etsy to purchase. I will warn you, they're probably going to be pretty expensive because with all of the 3D modeling and the hand sculpting that I have to do, they take me quite some time to make. I think I had like five hours of footage here for the one hand. And while some of that was experimenting with the design and trying to get it right, I do anticipate most likely this set will take me five, six hours to complete. So I anticipate it being over a hundred dollars. The way that I kind of price out my sets is by time to complete it. I would like to pay myself about $20 an hour because that doesn't include cost of materials, cost of shipping, but I do, I hate charging a lot for nails. I know that people turn to press-ons as an alternative to going to the salon. A lot of the time it's cheaper, but I just find that the sets that I make tend to be a lot more time consuming than maybe I originally think. I have these ideas that are a lot more detailed maybe than what you might get at a normal salon. So I feel bad charging a lot for some of the sets that I make, but I do also have to think about to myself, you know, what is my time worth? If I am spending five hours on a set, then realistically, I should probably be charging like $100 for them. But I don't know. You all let me know. What would you pay for this set? Help me price some things. I would really love to know what you think is reasonable because I tend to be a horrible judge of that. I think I undervalue myself quite a lot pretty often. So I'd love some feedback. Now I'm just going in and adding some white details. I wanted it to look a little bit galaxy-esque. Something that fits with that dream world theme. So I'm just adding these little swoops. I am using the embossing gel for this because I do find that it acts more like a gel paint. Sometimes if I want like really nice crisp lines and I use a gel that's too thin, I find that it runs all over the place or it bunches up at the end of the brush and it won't stay nice and thin. So I do love using a thicker gel for doing lines, but then I do switch here to a thinner gel for these stars. Sorry, it's so blurry. I don't know what was going on with the focus here. I think it was prioritizing my hand instead. The brush that I'm using is the Leaf Gel Long Liner Brush. I love this thing. It is so, so, so thin, as you can see there, so you can get super nice, crisp details. It is pricey. I got it off of Zillaboo. I think it was $20. On sale, I might've been able to get it for like 17. I think it's well worth it. It's a super, super skinny liner brush and I just get the nicest, cleanest lines from it. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like you all have watched me do stars quite a bit recently. Um, I don't know. I just love these little four pointed stars or the eight pointed stars. I think it's such an easy way to add an extra little bit of detail to a design along with these little dots here. There's something I've always loved about floating particles. What I mean by that is like the little dots here that look like they're suspended in air. Even when I used to do digital art, I used to draw portraits and things like that on Photoshop. I actually have my old, old, old digital art channel linked as like a related channel on my YouTube here if you want to check it out. 
but I used to love doing little floating particles and that kind of artwork as well. I don't know what it is. There's something I just love about little things that float in the air, I suppose. It reminds me of like little things, little glittery things floating in water or maybe of being in the woods and seeing those sunlight shafts light up with the little specks of dust, but I don't know, something about it. I love little stars, little floating particles. So I'm adding those stars to the nails with the 3D elements as well, just to add something to the backgrounds. In hindsight, I think I would have painted them first and then put the 3D elements over because it's hard to get the right angle for those stars. As you can see on this one here, I struggle getting the brush to bend the right way in order to get that nice fine tip to those points because I have that 3D element there. So for future sets, I will know where I'm placing all this stuff and I'll be able to paint the stars on first. For this one, I kind of was just winging it like I do with a lot of my sets. So I am painting the stars as an afterthought. I keep saying this, I feel like I say it in every video, but I do want to start planning my nails out ahead of time and actually drawing out the designs so that I know what I'm doing before going into it. I feel like that would save me a lot of time in the design process. If any of you have any suggestions for drawing programs that you do use to plan out your nails, I know some people have like Canva templates that they use or Photoshop templates. I don't have an iPad. I don't have Apple products. I have Samsung products. So I do have like a Galaxy tablet that I can use. So unfortunately I can't use Procreate. I know there are some templates in Procreate that you can use to design your nails, but if any of you have any suggestions for Android users, I would love to hear what those are. I have so many designs in mind that I want to make. Unfortunately right now, I am in the busiest part of school. I am also the senior teacher representative, so I help them with the graduation process, which means April, May is a very busy time for me trying to gear up to help those seniors graduate and move on with their lives. So I haven't been able to do as much nail art as I wanted, but I'm super excited for summer to come where I can start exploring all the different design ideas I have. Here, I'm just top coating all of the nails using my favorite go-to Jinbi Crazy Thick Top Coat to seal in the edges of any of the 3D elements before giving it a nice top coat with Beetle's top coat. I am switching over here pretty soon once I finish this bottle to the D-Gel top coat. I've heard amazing things about it. I got the non-wipe scratch resistant top coat. It's highly recommended. It's expensive, so that's another reason that my nail sets tend to be maybe some might consider on the pricier side, but that's because I'm trying to use really high quality products. And because of that, I do need to make up for the cost by selling them at a bit of a higher price, but I'm hoping that means that the overall quality of the nails are a little bit more luxurious. So I'm going in with that Jin B. I'm just sealing in those 3D elements making sure that they definitely don't go anywhere and making sure that there are no edges that hair will get caught under. That is the biggest pet peeve of mine. I hate when my nails have like a sharp edge and my hair gets stuck when I'm trying to run my fingers through it. So I always make sure to seal everything in really nice and well so that you have no chance of getting your hair stuck. Then I go over each of these with just the regular top coat to make sure that everything is nice and glossy and smooth. I do think I maybe overworked the top coat just slightly on this set. As you can see here, I'm putting it on in multiple brush strokes. That can lead to some bubbling. I did have some bubbles on those 3D elements, but I was trying to make sure that everything was nice and covered. So for future sets, I'll know to not overwork it too much if I don't want too many bubbles. Overall, I'm a huge fan of how these turned out. I think that they perfectly encapsulate my experience with Kirby and Dreamland, which was just that it was such a bright, fun game, something that I played 
to relax and explore a magical little world that wasn't my own. So here is the finished look. I do end up, like I said, changing that middle finger. So I will show you what the new version looks like. It's just a little bit more accurate to the game. I actually picked a wand specifically from Kirby and Dreamland. Here it is. It's this little star wand. I added the wings, but otherwise it's exactly from the game. And I thought that one looked just a little bit better with the set as a whole. Here's the finished product. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite video game is, some of your favorite characters. I really appreciate everyone who watched this video. If you like my work and you aren't already, please consider subscribing, check out my hauls and my other tutorials, but I will see you all next time. Thank you so much. Bye.